Hello, good morning. Uh, so, Dancing with Mr. D. Is this uh, like one of the top 10 stone songs of all time? No. <laughs> no way in hell. Uh, is it in the top 100 stone songs? Uh, you know, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but I, I listened to the Goat's Head Soup album back when it came out, 1973. Probably, I listened to it probably a thousand times. There's some great stuff on there. Uh, some of Mick Taylor's best guitar playing, I think, is on Goat's Head Soup. And this song, along with the others, just kind of wormed its way into my heart. And it's been there ever since, which is, that's how it works. Once, uh, you know, once a song gets into your heart, it's there forever. Uh, so I thought I'd do a lesson on it. It's also a good song for uh, beginners. It's pretty easy. Uh, at least the main riff is pretty easy. There's a lot of stuff going on in the song. Uh, there's, you know, slide. There's a lot of uh, Keith and Mick Taylor doing lead guitar stuff. It's all kind of buried in the mix. Um, interestingly enough, Bill Wyman didn't even play on this song. In fact, I think they say he only played on three songs on the Goat's Head Soup album. But Mick Taylor did a stellar job on the bass. And uh, so let's talk about this main riff for a bit here. The main riff, this thing goes through the whole song basically. It's uh, altered a little bit for the chorus. So he plays it with variations, but it's mostly just like this. <laughs> That's open A, three on the A, open D, two on the D, and then while holding that down, you play the uh, two on the A, forming this little chord. And so you play those both together. And then you release to the two open, uh, the D and G open. Of course, the second time around, you uh, you just leave it sustained on that A chord. Now, the first time he plays this, you can quite clearly hear that he does hammer-ons on those two notes. He doesn't always do that. Sometimes it's more like... And another thing, uh, of course, you know, this is Keith Richard. He does... He never plays anything the same way twice, but sometimes he leaves out that, that open A string, and it's just... Like that. So, you know, you can, you can be like Keith and just uh, play that whichever way you feel like at the time. Now, the chorus, as I said, is a little different. That's... Uh, based on a uh, an A power chord. These three notes, open A, uh, D string on the uh, second fret, A string on the second fret. So that's an A, an E, and another A. And then you bounce off between that and just this. Open A string, open D, open G. And then at the very end you punctuate it with a D power chord. It's just basically a regular D chord. You probably don't want, I don't ever hear that that high third in there. I think it's basically just, you know, like I said, a power chord, root fifth and octave. Um, and the timing is a little different on the last time around. So it's like. The last 
time round, which is the fourth time, it's a little shorter. And then right back into that riff. So the whole thing is like this, the whole chorus. So some people might say this is a very simple song and uh, yeah I mean you can play that you can play that riff quite easily even a beginner can play that um, I, I just want to editorialize here for a second when you say a song is simple and you're talking about uh, blues rock and roll that sort of thing any kind of music where it's a lot a lot of is improvised you're making it up as you go uh, the fact that it's a simple chord progression or it's spaced on a simple riff that doesn't mean it's a simple song at all uh, I see people making people who should know better make this mistake all the time they'll say here's a real simple song that that anybody can play well yeah you can play you can play the chords to a very simple song uh, but when a good band that's been playing together for years and years and they've been honing their instruments, you know, perfecting their craft for 20 years or whatever. When they play that song, it's not going to sound anything like the way the beginner plays it. It's going to be complicated. There's going to be, if you take just for example, the lead guitar uh, on, a, on a blues or something. If you were to transcribe and write in standard notation, for example, what... Uh, Hendrix plays on a blues or Stevie Ray Vaughan or somebody. I mean, that's not simple in any way. That's uh, That would rival anything that uh, Bach or Mozart came up with. Uh, now it's not written down. They're making it up as they go. Does that not count for some reason? Of course it counts. Um, so I guess my point is that simple songs that uh, and music that starts with a simple framework doesn't have to be simple. You can play it any way you want. Uh, and and impro that's the nature of improvised music, I guess. Now, some then there's some improvised music like jazz that even starts with a more complicated framework. But, uh, but that part isn't really what I'm getting at. I'm talking about take, you can take a simple framework and make it as complicated as you want, depending on the skill levels of the people involved. So, enough of my uh, soapbox today. I'll get down off it. Um, here's another thing that's a little, well, it's very Stones-like. When the song starts out, the first time you hear the riff, pretty slow. Um, when the band comes in, it picks up a little bit, and then the speed increases, you know, by, say, 5, 6 BPM. Uh, and then kind of settles down into that groove but I think it's really effective that way that that's this riff sounds better slow when it's when you're playing it by itself anyway so there's that 